Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ba. I am the CEO and creative director of Bitmoji. Uh, and I'm really excited to be here. This is my first time uh, in Berlin uh, since I was three years old. Um, and I don't really remember that trip. Um, and I think after the next few nights, I might not remember this trip. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm here to talk about uh, the power of the avatar. Um, and I guess, first of all, just out of curiosity, uh, how many people here have a Bitmoji? Anybody? All right. OK, a few people. Um, OK, next question. Uh, how many people here uh, like to draw uh, when they were a little kid? OK, a few more people. Uh, cool. Well, I really, really liked to draw when I was a little kid. Um, it was my favorite thing to do. Uh, it let me bring my imagination out into the world uh, in, in ways that nothing else would let me do. Um, so much so, I would, I would draw everywhere. I would draw on the walls. I would draw on the furniture. I would make my parents really upset with me. Uh, in school, I would draw during class, and I would get into big trouble uh, with my teachers. Um, and I just kept drawing. Uh, a lot of people stopped drawing uh, as they got older, but when I, as I got older, I kept drawing even more. And the more I drew, uh, the more I came to realize that cartooning uh, isn't just uh, a great way to, a fun way to express yourself and get into trouble with your teachers. It's this really uniquely powerful form of communication uh, because it combines uh, all these different things into a single form. Uh, so it combines text, which we all use, uh, symbols, um, which show that this text is being spoken by someone. Facial expressions. Uh, so you can see someone, whoever's saying, wow, is pretty excited. Uh, adding facial expressions, so they're happily excited. Um, body language uh, that adds even more information. Color and composition uh, that all comes together to put together like this amazing amount of information in a single image that anyone in the world can understand. And so as I kept drawing, I, I started to think, this is such a powerful form of communication. It's kind of a shame that it's only accessible to cartoonists. And I thought, what if everyone in the world could, could, could make cartoons? Uh, and what if they could make cartoons not just for entertainment, but for communication and, and use this language. And, and I thought, you know, maybe this would actually change how people can relate to each other and maybe it could change the world. So thought a lot about this and got some of my, you know, most uh, talented friends together. And way back in 2007, uh, we built this website called Bitstrips. And the idea was we would use technology to enable anyone in the world to become a cartoonist, regardless of whether they could draw or not. So on our website, again, this is 2007, uh, you could create your own comics, you could share them online, you could design your own characters and put them into your comics, and you could design yourself and your friends to star in your comics. And so we launched this and we were, we were thrilled to see this really amazing community formed on Bitstrips. Uh, and they were doing incredible things with these tools we made, which was, which was really exciting for us. They were doing things that we didn't even think was possible with the tools. They were making like, you know, kind of classic comic strips. They were creating like crazy art and really playing with the, the form of it. Uh, they were recreating uh, classic uh, works of art using props like the scream made with bananas. Uh, and every day we were, we were amazed at, at what our users were making. Um, but then we were also amazed, we saw something really magical happen that we didn't really expect, which was that the people on Bitstrips, they weren't just making comics. Uh, they were becoming these characters, and they were living as these, these cartoon avatars. Uh, they were using them to, co to communicate with each other. They would comment on each other's comics. They would send messages to each other. They would chat with each other. Sometimes they would talk without words, just using their facial expressions. Uh, and they'd get to know each other, 
as avatars. Uh, and it became this world that they inhabited. And in that world, like all kinds of amazing things started to happen. Uh, for example, uh, some of them even fell in love. Uh, these are real people uh, as their bit strips characters. Uh, the lady on the left uh, was one of our most prolific users who lived in America. And the, the gentleman on the right lived in Ireland and met her through her comics that she was making. And they fell in love. He moved to America and they got married and produced a real human child. Uh, which, you know, is amazing. So I take full responsibility for that life existing. And, that's, and this has happened more than once. Um, and so seeing this happen made us realize that, you know, originally we were thinking about, like, what a huge idea uh, letting people communicate through comics would be. Uh, but it had actually led us to an even bigger idea that we hadn't thought of at first, which was the power of the avatar. And that power is, the avatar is like, it's this extension of yourself that lets you be present in the digital world so that your friends and your loved ones and your fans can actually see you and interact with you uh, without you having to be there. Um, it adds the, the language of cartoons to your vocabulary, uh, letting you express yourself in, in ways that you couldn't with just words. And as it is in real life, it makes you the medium of your self-expression. So we realized that this was a huge idea, uh, a potentially revolutionary idea um, that we realized was so big, it was probably inevitable. Uh, whether we did it or not, or someone else did it, everyone in the world eventually would have a cartoon avatar. Um, but at this time, this was only really happening uh, on our tiny little website. Meanwhile, the world was changing. Communication was evolving. Again, this, this all started for us in 2007. And I'll go further back by a few hundred thousand years. Uh, most of history, human communication had been face to face. And over time, we developed technology, uh, amazing technology, the telephone, uh, which enabled us to communicate in a way that transcended space. And eventually, that evolved into texting, which enabled us to transcend time, asynchronous chat. Um, but as much as these innovations uh, made communication way more convenient, they also made it less human. They stripped away all of the visual information that's natural to human interaction, to the point where you read a text conversation, and for all you know, you could be talking to a robot. Um, and so this is why, you know, when people started communicating with text, they realized it wasn't enough. They realized it was just way too dry. So they started finding little solutions, like the invention of emoticons, so you could tell if someone was joking or not. Uh, and this eventually led to the rise of emoji, because people needed to bring back this emotional nuance and tonality that had been lost as text took over as the predominant form of communication. So this was really pretty wild for us to see because we'd been really thinking in this context of comics, but thinking about how do we get people to communicate using cartoons? And it was happening anyway, it was happening everywhere. And everyone started talking in this cartoon language. And as it became bigger and bigger, to the point where everyone is using these, uh, it started to feel like we're all kind of living in this cartoon world. But something really, really important was still missing from that world, which was the main character, which is you. So this is why we evolved uh, from bit strips to Bitmoji, because we knew that to make this communication feel more human again, we wanted to make your emoji look like you. So we took that technology and we brought our avatars into messaging. 
Uh, and it was really amazing to, to just see how people responded to this. And, and this, is, this is my avatar, and these are some of my favorite Bitmojis. And, and you can see, like, I could, by combining text and body language and facial expressions and composition, each of these tells a little story uh, that's more than I could say with any line of text or even any combination of emojis. Because um, avatars uh, are really this really powerful fusion of cartooning and communication. So they combine text, emotion, and identity into this single image. Uh, in real life, we use, we use more than just words. We communicate with our body language, uh, and even with our fashion choices. So, for example, in this one, I can, I can tell someone I love you while also proclaiming my World Cup allegiance. Uh, so, you know, to keep life feeling human, uh, we really need to bring those kinds of details back into our messaging. And as we did this, uh, we, we saw really amazing things starting to happen. Like, you, you may think that cartoon characters are kind of something for kids, but what we saw was whole families started using this together. Um, and they would have these full conversations using their Bitmojis, and it was basically transforming the messaging thread from something you would just read that would look the same for everybody into this totally unique space that you share together uh, that makes it feel like you're in the same room uh, and makes it feel like your family is like your own cast of characters, like everyone becomes their own Simpsons. Um, one thing we found is that moms really love Bitmoji because uh, they can see their kids. Um, and avatars, they keep us together even when we're apart. So this is why we, we really believed in avatars as this inevitable development of the internet because the internet needed them, it needs them. Because the more time we're spending online, uh, the more we kind of need these avatars to personalize and humanize our, our experience during that time, uh, making it feel more, more alive, more personal, more human. Um, and one idea that, that we think is, you know, that we're working on and that, that is also inevitable is the idea that your avatar should be able to go with you, uh, whatever you're doing, uh, in the same way that, like, in the real world, whether you're going shopping, or you're going to the bathroom, or you're going for a jog, your body is, is the continuous uh, thing that exists in all of those places. And so if you're having all these different experiences online, you should have a self that goes with you in the same way. Uh, so one example of that is on, on Snapchat, you can show your friends not only where you are in the world, but, but what you're doing in real time, which is pretty cool. Um, we've also embedded it into Gmail so that like, as, you're, as you're writing emails, you can insert yourself into your emails and, and, and lighten them up. Um, and something we've, we've just launched last week is a uh, Bitmoji API working with Snapchat, uh, which is gonna let any developer plug this in to any app, any experience. One of our first launch partners uh, coming out really soon is Tinder. So people are going to be able to use their avatars to up their flirting game, uh, which is going to be pretty interesting. Um, and really, this is just the beginning. Uh, you know, as the future is coming faster and faster, uh, our world is starting to become this mixture of reality and imagination, with things like virtual reality, augmented reality. Uh, it's a world that we're moving into where art and technology are fusing to become the same thing. Uh, and I think of it as a cartoon world. And this is the world that we're all starting to live in now. And this is why the time is coming when everyone in the world is going to have an avatar, one kind or another. It's, it's inevitable because we need them. Because if we're all going to live in a cartoon world, then we all need to be our own cartoons. That's it. Thank you. So people are wondering, how long do people spend making Bitmojis? And what is loyalty and churn like? 
Sorry? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> how, lo how, how long, long do, do people, people spend, spend making, making Bitmoji and what is loyalty slash churn like? Oh, interesting. Uh, so how long do people spend? So people love creating their Bitmojis. When you create it, uh, you know, you're going through this avatar builder where you can choose your hairstyle, you can choose your nose, your eyebrows, your eyes, your eyelashes, your jawline, your ears, every detail, your clothing. Um, so a lot of people spend, spend a good amount of time uh, kind of perfecting it. Because one of the cool things about an avatar is it's not just necessarily exactly what you look like, it's what you want to look like or what you think you look like. Uh, so it's kind of this essential version of yourself. And speaking of yourself, and in terms of like loyalty and churn, what we find is that when you use an avatar to represent yourself to the people that you care about, this metaphysical thing happens where the avatar actually becomes an extension of yourself. Uh, and I think it takes about a week for it to really set in. But once it's in, that's you. Your friends see your avatar and they see you. And what we found is that once people actually start using it, they're, they're hooked. Uh, and they're, they're using it years later. Fantastic. Is there anything counterintuitive about making an avatar? Uh, well, sometimes it can be hard to uh, know without looking in a mirror, like, what shape are my eyebrows? Uh, so, you know, sometimes a lo there's like a social activity. We see like people are like, you know, having dinner and they'll pass their phones around the table and create their, each other's avatars for them. Um, and we just brought in a, a photo feature so that you have a reference so you can actually see your face as you're making it. Fantastic. Bar, thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Big everybody. applause for Bar. Thank you.